Now, before we listen to the opening lecture, I would like to tell you a little bit about the aims and intentions that we, the planning team, have with this conference. And this means, of course, also introducing you a little bit into its topic. Public theology, religion, education, inter-religious perspectives. To address the first notion, what is public theology? Of course, we are all aware that this is not an easy question to answer. As Harold Breitenberg emphasized more than a decade ago, and as we may be able to reaffirm during our conference, there are different concepts of public theology, so that we can rather speak of public theologies in the plural than in the singular. Yet it seems to me that three basic aspects can be named that are foundational for public theology across most concepts and contexts although I'm aware of the risk that my emphasizing these three aspects may also be due to a subjective perspective, but this is then the perspective that we have here at the Nuremberg Forum. The first aspect is that public theology implies the awareness of a religion to be only one among other religions and worldviews in a pluralistic society and in the world. Public theology is public in the sense that it finds itself in a public realm that is characterized by religious and worldview diversity. And public theology is not only aware of this fact, but positively affirms such a particularistic position within pluralism. Public theologians have come to appreciate the openness and diversity of a pluralistic world and accept that this limits their own sphere of influence. I suggest calling this the self-limiting aspect of public theology. In German, Selbstbegrenzung. The second aspect that directly follows from the first one is that public theology is public in the sense that it exposes itself and its religious tradition willingly to critical public discourse. This implies that public theology accepts that in a pluralistic society and world there are certain basic common values and criteria by which religions and worldviews can legitimately be criticized and challenged. As an example, we can think of the internationally codified human rights. I suggest calling this aspect the self-critical aspect of public theology. The third aspect I would like to point out is the one that is usually mentioned first when public theology is defined, but which in my view relies on the other two. It is the fact that public theology is willing and aiming to make contributions to the common good of pluralistic societies and the world. This means that public theologians insist that their religious tradition has to offer potentials for addressing the major societal and global challenges we are facing, that it can help finding humane solutions to concrete problems as well as developing hopeful visions for the future. And public theologians lay special emphasis on the fact that the religious perspectives they bring in are to the benefit of everybody, irrespective of their religious and secular worldviews. Public theology is public in the sense that the treasures of its tradition are for all. I suggest calling this the self-transcending aspect of public theology, in German, Selbstüberschreitung. As we are all aware, public theology is a concept that arose in the context of Christianity. It is interesting to see how it developed almost simultaneously in different countries and in different parts of the world. Obviously, it is a concept that was and is perceived to be a convincing response to certain transformations in societies and to a changed world. This intercontextual dimension raises the question of how other religions respond to those changes and how they relate to the perspectives of public theology. This is the first thematic field and challenge 
we would like to explore with this conference and which is indicated by the notion of religion in its title and in the subtitle Interreligious Perspectives. It can be differentiated in at least three sub-questions. First, are there traditions and concepts in other world religions that have similarities or analogies to the Christian concept of public theology? What can we learn from each other when it comes to religious perspectives of contributing to the common good in a pluralistic world? For instance, I'm curious to learn more about the traditional Jewish concept of tikkun olam, that literally means saving the world, and is used by current Jewish theologians to motivate and reflect on Jewish contributions to the common good. Second, is the concept and notion of public theology useful as an interreligious paradigm? For instance, the International Journal of Public Theology, whose chief editor, Sebastian Kim, we are happy to have among us, published its volume 7 in 2013 titled Jewish Public Theology. And there are at least a few authors who you come across when you do research on the internet who have used the notion of Islamic public theology. Would it make sense to speak of a Buddhist public theology? Third, promoting interreligious dialogue and understanding can be seen as one major task of public theology. Maybe one of the most crucial contributions to the common good that religions can make is to reduce feelings of hostility and strangeness between religions and to facilitate a peaceful coexistence and cooperation. It seems to us that this task could and should be placed more prominently in the focus of public theology. And we hope that this conference can stimulate such a development. The second thematic field we would like to explore with this conference is the connection between public theology and education. It is quite obvious that in pluralistic liberal democracies that are based on the premise of free and equal citizens, coercive measures can only be the last option in cases of emergency. The primary and best way to win people for the case of a humane, democratic society and world is to try to convince them by arguments and try to stimulate learning processes. In his recent work, Jürgen Habermas has emphasized the role of such learning processes and developed the concept of complementary learning of religious and non-religious citizens in order to promote a fruitful cooperation for the common good of society. Education, in this sense of stimulating learning processes of free and equal human beings, is of immense importance to all pluralistic democracies. Accordingly, it is also essential for the tasks and intentions of public theology, including, in particular, the field of interreligious dialogue and learning. It seems to be widely unknown that American church historian Martin Marty, who has been credited with having introduced the term public theology into academic discourse in 1973, published a book in the year 2000 titled Education, Religion, and the Common Good. In this book, he makes a passionate plea for integrating religion into public education in the United States, in US schools and universities. And it has been only a recent discovery for myself that German systematic theologian Sigurd Decke, already in 1970, so three years before Marty used the term, wrote about public theology in the context of religious education at public schools. With reference to the so-called new political theology, represented by Johann Baptist Metz, Jürgen Moltmann, Dorothy Sölle and others, he advocates a public religious education that corresponds to a public 
empirical, critical, and political theology. And he goes on to argue that because public theology aims to address the public beyond church walls and the academia, it has to apply didactical principles such as have been developed for the school subject of RE. To sum up, it seems quite clear that traditionally, as well as in modern times, education has always been one major area in which and by which the Christian churches have become public and have influenced public affairs. It therefore seems to us that on the one hand, education deserves more and more systematic attention in the context of public theology discourse than it has received to date. On the other hand, recent discourse in German academic religious pedagogy has raised the awareness that the political public dimension of religious education at schools may have been neglected during the past 30 years and should be refocused. Some colleagues who we have invited for the conference and myself have made attempts to develop perspectives for a public religious pedagogy in analogy to and in conversation with public theology. However, the first day of our conference is intended to concentrate on the first thematic focus I have mentioned, the relationship between public theology and interreligious dialogue. 